Good morning, pre-calculus people. So today, <clears throat> I wanted to do something, uh, well actually just move on to the next section here. We're at a limited amount of time, so we're just going to hit a couple, to couple, few more topics before the end of the year. We did law of sines, law of cosines, Heron's formula, maybe we get a little bit of sequence series in there, and that's about it. So anyway, so let's jump right in. So we got law of sines. So why is it that we have the law of sines? Um, well, we've been so far able to solve our triangles just as long as they're right triangles. If it's a right triangle, we can use simple right triangle trig and we can find all the missing pieces, all the angles, all the sides, we get it all. Um, but let's face it, a lot of triangles are not right triangles, so we need some other method to help us to find missing sides and angles of, um, of triangles that are not right triangles. So that's why we have the law of sines. It enables us to find missing pieces of non-right triangles. So to find missing pieces, AKA sides and angles, missing pieces of non-right triangles. triangles. There you go. So what's the key concept? Well, the law of sines is based on a very simple idea that in a triangle, let's draw a little triangle over here, in a triangle, the smallest side is across from the smallest angle, and the biggest side is across from the biggest angle. That makes sense. And obviously the medium side will be across from the medium angle. So that's the concept. That Smallest side across from smallest angle, biggest side across from biggest angle. It's really simple. So let's say we have this, uh, let's say we have this generic triangle here, triangle ABC, and the way we uh, label it is that across from angle A will be side A, across from angle B will be side B, and we'll see the same thing. So what we have is this cool little ratio right here. The ratio of side A to the sine of A, remember we're just relating the uh, side and the angle, the ratio of A to sine A is the same as B to sine B is the same as C to sine C. So if we know various parts of this, we can get all the other parts. So um, let's do an example. And it's going to be really pretty simple, straightforward use of this formula right here. So I've drawn the diagram here for you uh, in this case. Uh, but in the, next, uh, in the next problems, we're just going to have to figure out how to make the diagram. And that's totally fine. OK, so here we are. So we got A, B, C. And we know that C is 28, um, and uh, angle C is 29 degrees, and angle B is 101 degrees. We need to find all the stuff. Well, we know that uh, we want to match up the side and the angle across from it, so those guys go together. And we know that we want to uh, match up, again, the angle and the side that goes across from it, so we're actually needing to have side B right here. So we're going to set up um, our little proportion that we uh, have right up here. So we're going to have 28 over the sine of that angle, sine of 29. And that's going to be the same as B, which we don't know, over the sine of 101. So we just get our calculators out and we can, uh, oh, by the way, these are all in degrees, by the way, so no more radiance for us right now. Um, so we're only going to be in degrees. So um, we're going to do the sine of 29. So I'll just put all these things down there. Sine of 29, 0.4848. So we got 28 over 0.4848 equals B over the sine of 101. Sine 101 equals 0.9816. And traditionally, we calculate with four decimal places because back in the day, we actually had tables to do this. Uh, then and the tables were calculated out to four decimal places. So we just multiply these two and divide by that one and we're done. So we're going to multiply by 28. So times 28 equals divide by 0.4848 equals bada bing bada boom 56.69. So B equals 56. Point, what did I say? 69. 69. So B equals 56.69. That makes sense because it's across from a bigger angle. It should be bigger than that side right there, which is across from a smaller angle. 
Okay, so now we got this side right here, which is 56.69. 56.69. And so now we'd like to find this side. So, um, but before we can find this side, we need to know this angle. But this angle is easy to find because we just know that 180 degrees is the sum of the angles of a triangle. So 101 and 29 makes 130. So this guy here must be 50. So we just need to do one more thing here. So we're going to do, um, and I'd recommend that you, you do the calculations with the sides and angles that were given to you because, you know, let's say we made a mistake and we came up with something that was not correct. Uh, then we'd calculate this side based on this thing here, which we calculated that was incorrect. So try to always use the information that's given to you. You can't always do that, but try as much as you can. So we're going to do the same thing we just did. So we're going to have um, 28 over um, sine of 29. So 28 over sine of 29 equals, uh, in this case, now we're going to have a, which we don't know, over the sine of 50. Well, 28 over sine, 40, uh, sine of 29, we already know that. So that's 28 over 0.4, I need to move my Snapple bottle there, 0.4848 equals um, A over the sine of 50. So sine 50 equals 7660, 0 0.7660. So again, we cross multiply. So we're gonna multiply by 28. So times 28 equals, divided by 0.4848 equals, and we got 44.24. So A equals 44.24. So that was a missing side. Oops, sorry, 44.24, <laughs> that was a missing side. This was a missing side. Just don't wanna to go too far there. And this was a missing angle. So we're missing one angle and two sides and we got them all. Okay, so that's it. This is the law of sines and this is how to do it. Obviously things get a little more complicated, but not much. Okay, um, so uh, as I said, I'm not gonna have things drawn for you, so we're gonna have to figure them out. So a tree grows so that it leans six degrees from vertical. I don't know, let's say it was growing on a plain in Kansas and the wind was blowing and it's always blowing in the same direction, so the tree was leaning six degrees or something like that. Okay, uh, so you stand 30 yards from the tree, observing the tree leaning away from you. So um, so you can imagine that um, the top of the tree is a little further away from you than the bottom of the tree. Um, and the angle of elevation is 22.5 degrees. How tall is the tree? Okay, well here is you. You're going to be standing right here. And 30 yards away, there's going to be a tree. So that's 30 there. And we got this tree that's growing like this. Here's my high quality tree here. I'll even, I'll even color it in a little bit. Oh crap, I had green. Okay, well we have green right here. I'll color in green right there. There's our tree and it's leaning away. And I feel like Bob Ross again. Uh, so we know that's leaning away at six degrees from vertical. Well, vertical is 90 degrees. And if we're gonna add six degrees to that, we're gonna have 96 degrees right here. And so we have this nice triangle right here. So what we wanna find out is how tall is the tree? So let's call that X. Oh, and we know the angle of elevation is 22.5. 22.5 degrees. Um, so um, we know that when we use the law of sines, we have to have sides and angles across from each other. And so we have 30, 30, um, 30 yards here, but what we don't have is this angle up here. Well, that's easy to find, right? We just add these two guys here and subtract from 180. So 96 and 22.5 is 118.5 uh, and 180 minus 118.5 is 61.5 degrees. I hope, 61.5. So let me just make sure that's correct. So 61.5 and 22 is um, 8384 and 96. That makes um, that makes 180. Good. So we're good. All right. So we got 61.5 degrees there. We got 30 yards there. Um, we got 22.5 degrees. We got X there. So we just set it up. So 
So we're going to do 30 over sine of 61.5 equals x, we don't know, over sine of 22.5. So we just figure out all the stuff and cross multiply and we're done. So let's do sine of 61.5, sine 61.5 equals 0.8788. So 30 over 0.8788 equals x over sine of 22.5, 22.5 equals 0.3827. 3827. So then we just cross multiply and divide. So multiply that by 30 equals divide by 0 0.8788. 0 0.8788 equals 13.06. So x equals 13.06 yards. I suppose we don't generally measure the height of trees in yards, but there it is. Okay, so now so this is part one of the part one. Uh, I'm going to end right here, um, but you need to watch part two right now, which is about the ambiguous case. I did a little quick demonstration on uh, on my board, uh, and then we're going to have a third part um, later. So here ends part one. You need to watch part two right now.